Ancient Egypt is a never-ending source of speculation, mystery, and mythology. But maybe there's a lot that we don't yet understand. Maybe they were a lot more advanced than we think today. They had an understanding of architecture, medicine, the cosmos, and even the process of aerodynamics that's simply impossible for their time period. From the very first model of a working aircraft to the tomb of the most mysterious pharaoh that ever lived, here are 20 amazing discoveries in Egypt that scare scientists. Number 20. Finding the Tomb of King Tut's Wife Queen Anka Senemun was a very mysterious and troubled figure in ancient Egypt's history. She married her father at age 12, and then they married her to her half-brother, famous King Tutankhamun. When King Tut died at a very young age, she was remarried to Pharaoh I, and until very recently, nobody knew where her tomb was. According to archaeologist Zahi Hawass, former head of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, they have found a mysterious tomb near Pharaoh I's tomb, and it may belong to Queen Anka Senemun, who lived in the 14th century BC. They have unearthed four foundation deposits, which is evidence that there is a tomb under there. The foundation deposits are basically holes filled with votive objects such as a blue painted vase, knives with wooden handles, and the head of a bovine. A scan of the site situated in Egypt's infamous Valley of the Kings shows an anomalous void that may be the hint as to where the tomb entrance may be. But they haven't been able to fully locate it yet, which is very strange, isn't it? It's not the first time a radar proves problematic in the Valley of the Kings. Famously, in 2016, a radar scan showed a secret chamber in King Tutankhamun's tomb, but later scans showed that the chamber does not exist. Is this still proof of the powerful magic that the ancient Egyptians meddled with? Are these tombs still cursed? Do you think we should just leave them buried, not knowing what kind of evil could be unleashed? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the star topic. This incredible discovery was recently unearthed in an undisclosed location in Egypt. Scientists are completely baffled about this chariot that doesn't seem to belong to any period of time from ancient Egypt. In fact, this exact type of chariot is found all over Bulgaria, so how come it was found inside of a tomb in the middle of the Egyptian desert? All we know is that the tomb is at least 3,000 years old. At that time, the Egyptian Empire didn't have any kind of connections with modern-day Bulgaria. Could it be a lone traveler that decided to investigate northern Africa on his own? Legend has it some pharaohs would disguise themselves as peasants and travel to Europe to see what they were inventing there to see what they could bring back to their people. What do you think? Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Mummy Cash there's a very special area within the Saqqara necropolis in Egypt called the Area of Sacred Animals. As you may already know, there were lots of animals that the ancient Egyptians considered sacred, the most famous one being the cat. And archaeologists have recently unearthed 100 vividly painted wooden coffins from some 2,600 years ago. The sarcophagi are all in pristine condition and completely sealed. They were found all stacked atop one another in the same chamber as 40 statues of the funerary deity Ta Sokar Osiris and some bronze sculptures of the lotus flower god called Nefertum. Historians have placed all of these sarcophagi to the 26th dynasty, which was from 688 to 525 BC. And based on the inscriptions and names on the coffins, this was possibly the burial site for a family or a group of people. Most possibly priests and high officials of the temple of the cat goddess, Bastet. A sealed door has also been unearthed, and they expect to find even more mummies behind it. Number 18. 20 Sealed Coffins in Luxor Egypt is currently conducting the largest excavation project since 1922, the year that King Tutankhamun's incredibly preserved tomb was discovered and opened. And recently, archaeologists have unearthed 20 intact sarcophagi near the Egyptian city of Luxor. This is one of the largest and most important discoveries in recent years. The coffins were located on the Nile River's west bank, also known as the Valley of the Kings, which was once part of the ancient Egyptian capital city of Thebes. The sarcophagi were found stacked in 
in two layers in a gigantic tomb, and they are all made out of wood. Surprisingly, they are in incredibly good condition. They are particularly impressive for their bright colors, as well as the fact that they are still sealed, which is a rarity in Egyptian archaeology. Officials have not yet confirmed what time periods the coffins date to, but everything points towards Egypt's late period, which lasted from 664 to 332 BC. They most likely belong to nobles and government officials because of where they were found in the necropolis. Do you think they should open the sarcophagi, or do you believe that they should leave the past in the past? Some people think that opening coffins from ancient Egypt is never a good idea. Number 17. The Sacred Animals Cache They've uncovered recently a massive cache of mummified animals, including the world's largest scarab beetle at the ancient Saqqara necropolis, just south of Cairo, Egypt. This amazing discovery is the result of the hard work of a group of Egyptian archaeologists. They've unearthed a plethora of ancient artifacts, such as masks, statues and mummified cats, crocodiles, cobras, and several different birds. Also, a tomb belonging to a 5th dynasty royal priest called Watai. The leader of the mission has declared that CT scans done on five of the largest mummified have revealed that they were not cats at all, but there's a strong likelihood that they are, in fact, lion cubs, all according to the shape and size of the bones. In the same dig, they've also discovered about 75 wooden and bronze statues of cats, as you know that ancient Egyptians were a little bit obsessed with cats, and if you're a cat owner, you probably understand why. In ancient Egypt, they mummified people to preserve their bodies for the afterlife. On the other hand, animal mummies were used mostly as religious offerings to the gods. The Saqqara necropolis served as the burial ground for the city of Memphis, which was the capital of ancient Egypt for over two millennia. Number 16. The Screaming Mummy in 1881, archaeologists discovered the Deir el-Bahari royal cache in Luxor. This is the place where important priests of the 21st and 22nd dynasties would hide the mummified corpses of royal members of previous dynasties in order to protect them from grave robbers, which were many and savvy back then. And there, they discovered one mummy that is shrouded in mystery, the Screaming Mummy. Recent studies with CT scans and DNA tests carried out by Sahi Hawass have determined that the Screaming Mummy is the corpse of none other than Prince Pentoueret, the son of Pharaoh Ramses III. The story of Prince Pentoueret is a very dark and painful one. He was actually forced to kill himself by hanging as a punishment for having been involved in the assassination of his father. This horrific event in ancient Egyptian history is known as the Harem Plot. To further punish the murderous prince, the priests refused to mummify his body and they wrapped his corpse in sheepskin, which indicates his status as unclean. For ancient Egyptians, not being mummified meant that the person would be destined to hell in the afterlife. King Ramses III was the second pharaoh of the 20th dynasty of ancient Egypt. He is believed to have reigned from the 26th of March 1186 to the 15th of April 1155 BC, the day of his murder. Ramses III is considered to be the last great monarch of the new kingdom to wield an important authority over Egypt. Number 15. Egypt discovers the Valley of the Monkey, an ancient industrial zone. Did you ever wonder how ancient Egyptians managed to create so many beautiful and valuable artifacts? Well, it seems they too had industrial zones, just like we do now. They've recently unveiled the first one ever discovered. It's called the Valley of the Monkeys, and it's located in Luxor. The area includes 30 workshops, houses for storage, and the cleaning of funerary furniture. They also unearthed several potteries dating back to the 18th dynasty. The manufacturing area also contains a deep cut and water storage tank that were most likely used by the workers. Along with all the tools that they had used to construct and decorate the royal tombs, such as hundreds of inlay beads and golden wings of Horus seen in some sarcophagi. This is a major discovery, because until now, all we knew about the Valley of the Kings and how they buried the royals came from the tombs themselves. Now, we have a clear insight into how thousands of people worked to create such breathtaking and majestic funerary chambers. Imagine a whole city in the middle of the Egyptian desert where everyone that lives in it is working on making coffins and decorations for the pharaoh's tombs. And that'll give you a pretty good idea of what the Valley of the Monkeys was. Number 14. Rare Statue of King Ramses II 
An extremely rare pink statue of Pharaoh Ramses II has been recently discovered near the pyramids of Giza, Egypt. The mysterious statue is made entirely of pink granite and is almost three and a half feet tall. The statue has the symbol Ka, which is believed to represent the ethereal, the soul or the spirit of the person. In other words, this beautiful statue may have had the purpose of providing a resting place for the pharaoh's life force for the afterlife. Isn't that poetic, to encapsulate someone's essence in a statue? What's not so romantic is that the statue was found on the land belonging to a man that had been arrested earlier in the same month for carrying out illegal excavations. Thankfully, they caught him in time to salvage this unique piece. Before this astonishing discovery, only wooden statues of King Ramses II with the symbol Ka had been found. This is the first one made out of stone. Pharaoh Ramses II ruled ancient Egypt during the 19th dynasty between 1279 and 1213 BC. He had more children and built more monuments than any other pharaoh in history. Because of this, and because of a number of successful military campaigns into the Levant, he is often called Ramses the Great. Number 13. 59 Mummies and Mysterious Gods Have Emerged from Egypt Sacred artifacts seem to never stop emerging from the spiritual sands of time. The most recent took place in the necropolis of Saqqara, and it's considered to be the most important discovery since the pandemic. The 59 mummies date from the late period and are believed to be the corpses of priests, senior statesmen, and other people of high social standing. They were buried all together so they wouldn't have to travel to the underworld alone. Alongside their sarcophagi, they also found dozens of statues of the lotus god Nefertum and the dual god Ta Sokar. Some gods would rise and fall with the dynasties, but Nefertum was worshipped throughout the entire history of ancient Egypt. Ta Sokar was an amalgam of two gods. Ta was the god of craftsmen and architects, and Sokar was the Memphite god of the dead. It's very possible that some priests would have used Saqqara as a site to worship these two gods. The necropolis of Saqqara is one of the largest and richest burial sites of ancient Egypt, and it was used for over 3,000 consecutive years. The 59 mummies come from a period in history often referred to as the Egyptian Renaissance. Temples, literature, and art bloomed in this prosperous era. Number 12. Roman-era mummy found in Egyptian oasis. We sometimes tend to forget that ancient Egypt and the Roman Empire had an entwined history at some point, and this gorgeous sarcophagus is the ultimate culmination of both cultures mixed together. Take a look at this intricately carved plaster coffin that was recently discovered in a newly unearthed complex of tombs located in the remote desert oasis of Baharia, some 186 miles southwest of Cairo. The sarcophagus portrays a very wide-eyed woman dressed in a tunic, and it's the very first Roman-style mummy found in the area. Area. This discovery was part of a cemetery dating back to the Greco-Roman period, along with 13 other tombs. The sarcophagus, per se, is only three feet long, and it contains a woman wearing a long tunic, a headscarf, valuable bracelets and shoes, and a beaded necklace. They placed colorful stones in her eyes, which gives the eerie appearance that she is awake and looking into the abyss. They thought at first that it was a child's mummy because of the small size, but the decorations and features indicate that it is, in fact, an adult woman. As it seems, people of diminutive stature have been unearthed in other parts of Egypt, and they all seem to have a certain importance in local religions at the time. Number 11. Limestone Coffin Housing Mummies on September 21st, 2020, an Egyptian mission of the Supreme Council of Antiquities announced a very curious discovery. It was a burial shaft housing a limestone sarcophagus alongside several Lushabti statues. The site is located in Tuna El Gebel, an archaeological area in Menya. The head of the dig, Mustafa Waziri, reported that the well was found at an approximate depth of 5 meters in which the unique sarcophagus was buried. The coffin itself has inscriptions depicting the four children of the god Horus. All of the items were in very good condition. The mummy is that of a person called Jahudi Um Hoteb, who was a member of the 26th family. He is believed to have held the position of supervisor of the thrones. 
Tuna El Gebel is located in the city of Malawi, and it was the necropolis of Khnum. There are many monuments there from the Greco-Roman area, even from the late Middle Ages. The area is famous for hosting the catacombs of falcons, baboons, and ibises, and the tombs of Pedosiris and Isidora. Number 10. The Tombs of the Pyramid Builders I bet they taught you in school that the Great Pyramids were built by insane numbers of slaves or Jewish people, that they were treated horribly and worked until they succumbed to exhaustion and thirst. But it would seem that that never actually happened. The recent discovery of the Tombs of Pyramid Builders tells a very different story. First of all, there's clear evidence that they were all free men, and they were regarded as important enough to have their own tombs. These tombs were built right next to the King's Pyramid, which also means that these people were not by any means slaves. It's a very high honor to rest beside such an important monument. Once inside the tombs, you can see graffiti on the walls with inscriptions such as Friends of Khufu, who was a pharaoh. This is more confirmation than surprise at this point. So as you can see, the myth of slaves building the Great Pyramids is just that, a myth. When European people started discovering ancient Egyptian relics and culture, they interpreted it in their own way. But that doesn't mean that they got it right. Not by a long shot. Egyptian officials have long pushed against the idea of slave-built pyramids. They say it undermines the skill involved in their construction and the impressive sophistication of ancient Egypt's magnificent civilization. It's time to give Egyptian history back to the people of Egypt. Number 9. Strange Egyptian Head Cones if you look closely at some ancient Egyptian paintings, you'll be quick to notice something rather bizarre. Some of the people depicted have these very weird cones sitting atop their heads. These mysterious cones have long baffled archaeologists and historians alike. So much so that they ended up just concluding that they must have been a symbol of some sort. But now, we have found the first head cones. They were discovered at Akhetaten, a city famous for being one of Egypt's most extravagant and unusual places. First of all, the city only existed for 15 years, and it bears the name of Pharaoh Akhetaten, who not only is believed to have been King Tutankhamun's dad, but he also invented a monotheistic religion who worshipped a god represented by the sun. Now, of course, this religion was quite short-lived. The two head cones were found in a low-status worker's cemetery. They were made of beeswax and were tangled up in tresses. Which is bizarre, because in the paintings, such cones were only worn by members of the upper class. Which begs the question, what if these less unfortunate inhabitants of the city crafted themselves pairs of dummy cones? As it seems, the discovery of the mysterious objects raises more questions than it answers. Number 8. Tomb KV-5 King Ramses II evidently loved his sons very much, so much that he had a huge tomb carved for them in the famous Valley of the Kings. Ramses II ruled during the 19th dynasty, which was at the height of Egypt's power and riches. Their mighty and colossal empire stretched from Nubia in the south and across the Middle East in the north. This period was called the New Kingdom, and it is known today as Ancient Egypt's Renaissance. At this time of prosperity, King Ramses II ruled, and he's vastly regarded as the greatest pharaoh to ever rule Egypt. We said earlier in this video that he built more monuments and had more children than any other pharaoh before or since. And everything he did was on a large scale, including the tomb for his beloved and numerous sons. And when I say numerous, I mean that he fathered more than a hundred children with his many wives and concubines. Because he knew that this lavish and massive tomb would attract a lot of grave robbers, he decided to fill the first three chambers with dirt and mud from top to bottom. And it worked. In modern times, this breathtakingly impressive tomb was unearthed in 1902 by the same man who discovered King Tutankhamun's tomb. Number 7. Statues of Sekhmet Sekhmet was a lion-headed mother goddess, and she was one of the most common deities in ancient Egypt. Sekhmet was also associated with Ta, but she is best known as the Eye of the Sun. She represented the fierce, violent, and dazzling protective aspect of the god creator, the Sun. She's often referred to as the Powerful One. She was the defender of the almighty creator god Ra, and she was also his daughter. She was ruthless and a force of nature, or nature itself, depending on how you look at it. 
She controlled the yearly Nile floods in Egypt. She had the essential capacity of giving life and fertility, but also taking it away. Pharaoh Amenhotep III was incredibly devoted to the mother goddess Sekhmet. He ordered the manufacturing of over 730 statues of her, and they were all quite grandiose. The trained artists that so delicately made these statues were clearly trying to focus on her beneficial qualities and neutralize her fearful aspects. But honestly, she still looks quite fierce. Number 6. Serapium of Saqqara Welcome to the place of burial of the Apis bulls. Or is it? The ancient Egyptians called this place the House of Osirapis, and it has been a continuous source of utter mystery and speculation. It was originally discovered in 1850 by Mariette. The Apis bull was worshipped in Memphis. This deity was introduced in ancient Egypt by Ptolemy I with the intention of providing a god that could be worshipped by both Egyptians and Greeks. There are 24 sarcophagi here, and as you can see, it seems quite impossible that they could have been moved here. This place is surrounded by desert and river. So far, though, no mummy of an apis bull has ever been discovered here. So what was this place used for, then? The Serapium has the only entrance measuring 3.2 meters wide. There were 24 sarcophagi here. All were opened, except for the one that Mariette exploded to see what was inside, as his team found it completely impossible to lift the 32-ton lid covering the coffin. But no apis bull was ever found. Imagine exploding something that's thousands of years old just because curiosity got the better of you. Number 5. Meteorite Jewelry we all know that ancient Egyptians were very big on jewelry. The ones you could afford it were covered head to toe with golden pieces decorated with precious stones. But now we've discovered a new material they did jewelry with. Meteorite. Cool, huh? They found beads made from iron meteorites that fell to Earth from space in a 5,000-year-old tomb. That makes these gorgeous beads the oldest known iron artifact in human history. I mean, these were crafted roughly 2,000 years before Egypt's Iron Age even started. That's just mind-blowing. The tomb belonged to a teenage boy, and when they did a test on his necklace, they discovered, with utter surprise, curiously high concentrations of nickel, which is a universal telltale sign of iron meteorites. The x-rays also revealed that the delicate beads had been hammered into thin sheets before being rolled into tiny little tubes. And as it seems, this young man was not the only one that could show off his unique jewelry of cosmic origins, as they are discovering more and more artifacts from ancient Egypt that also have space origins, but none that dates from that long ago. This is truly a huge mystery. I mean, how did they know how to work with iron like that? Number 4. Unknown Electromagnetic Energy now that we know that the Great Pyramids of Giza were not made by slaves, that it wasn't just a mere attempt by the pharaoh to demonstrate his power and reach, do you wonder, then, what they did make them for? They're clearly not tombs or a simple monument, so what are they? Well, the history of this magnificent structure that doesn't seem to suffer the passage of time like the rest of us has always been steeped in mythology and mystery. But now, an international team of physicists has found that the Great Pyramid can concentrate insane amounts of electromagnetic energy in its internal chambers and also under its base. If you're interested in reading the whole study, it was published in the Journal of Applied Physics. Basically, ancient Egyptians believed that our Earth has cycles, some positive full of riches and abundance, and some others filled with terror and despair. They knew that the era of spiritual flourishing was coming to an end, so they literally decided to build a massive structure that would slow down the cosmic forces that were inevitably pushing them towards a period of cruel darkness. That's why the theory that the Great Pyramids were built by volunteers stands on its own. Nobody that's trying to save the entire planet would use slaves. Number 3. Dendra Light this amazing artifact is considered to be the very first depiction of a light bulb. It is located on a wall beneath the Temple of Hathor at Dendera, and you can clearly see how similar it is to modern-day light bulbs. Some people suggest that the drawing consists of a crook's tube, which was an early light bulb, two bulbs, and inside them two snakes forming a wavy line forming a lotus flower, the socket of the bulb. But that's not all. There's also something very similar to a wire that the air god is kneeling, and besides this bizarre object stands a two-armed jet 
dead pillar, which is also connected to the snake. Oh, and there's a baboon wearing two knives, for good measure. Some people strongly believe that this is proof of time travel. Somebody at some point traveled back to ancient Egypt and left behind a pair of light bulbs. The baboon being armed may suggest that they thought these artifacts could be very dangerous if used incorrectly. We all know that getting electrocuted isn't really fun at all, right? So what do you think? Do you think this is an artistic interpretation of a light bulb, or is it just a coincidence? Number 2. Tomb of the Silver Pharaoh also known as the Royal Tomb of Pharaoh Susens I, it's maybe one of the most magnificent and spectacular tombs of all of ancient Egypt, even more so than the one of the child king Tutankhamun. So how come the world hasn't heard of it? First of all, this amazing tomb was discovered on the brink of World War II. So as you can imagine, everyone had bigger fish to fry than to study a tomb from ancient times. But now, a group of archaeologists and historians are getting to work. One of the most amazing things they've discovered so far is that the king's mummy was actually entombed in pure silver. Pharaoh Susens is quite an obscure figure. Not much is known about him, except that he probably ruled over Egypt 3,000 years ago during one of the empire's most difficult times. He is considered the missing link of ancient Egypt's history. But the insane amount of riches found inside his tomb suggests that he was among the mightiest of rulers. His reign may have lasted an astounding 46 years in a fractured empire, whereas Tutankhamun's only lasted a decade. Susens' skeleton showed a very hard-working man who suffered from a very debilitating rheumatic disease, but he still managed to live 80 years. Number 1. The Saqqara Bird this magnificent small wooden figurine was unearthed back in 1898 from a tomb in the necropolis of Saqqara. Archaeologists estimate that it's about 2,200 years old, and you'll be quick to notice that although it's called a bird, it looks more like a modern-day airplane with the head of a bird. Strange, huh? You can imagine that this little statuette is quite the controversial piece amongst historians, so much so that it's prompted some people to believe that the ancient Egyptians may have had a better grasp on the process of aerodynamics than we give them credit for. This little wooden sculpture may very well be a model of an actual working aircraft, such as a glider of some type. Now imagine ancient Egyptians having fun flying over the Great Pyramids of Giza. And there's more. The History Channel recently did a test with an exact replica of the Saqqara bird. They tested if it could fly in a wind tunnel without a tailplane. And guess what? In four times, the little glider flew perfectly well. The test was conducted at the Liverpool University, and it was a total success. Could it be that this is just a coincidence that the statuette's able to fly on its own, or did they really have planes in ancient Egypt? It's no secret that the ancient Egyptians were very advanced and mysterious people, and we still have lots to learn from them. But some of the things we're discovering now are just mind-blowing. Do you think they were a very futuristic civilization that's been kept secret? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!